Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Socially Unstable Podcast. And Kenzie, uh, how are things in Baton Rouge? Wait, I know how they are. Because I'm also in Baton Rouge. Oh, dang. So, well, then you tell me, how are things in Baton Rouge? Things are very rainy in Baton <laughs> Rouge today. Yeah, um, exciting episode for all you people. You may have noticed, because I know you all religiously subscribe to the show, that we uh, did not have an episode go out uh, formerly because we were gearing up to come out to Baton Rouge and we knew we'd be able to do an episode or two in person. So, <laughs> here we are, like sitting in your fame department. Um, that I've it, seen yeah. on Instagram and TikTok, but have never seen a person. And now we're here. You're here. And I mean, I, I would like to think it's famous. Yeah. That's cool. The wall is definitely famous. You I, made a bunch of videos about it. It did wall. go pretty big, actually. That's probably one of my biggest um, reels that I ever made. I think Because you is. were using like a, it was like a decal of some sort. Yeah, they're it? like it vinyl, like, nice little vinyl stickers. Oh, they're not actually paint even? No. Oh, oh. heck no. I'm in an apartment. Yeah. We painted our apartment. <laughs> A little bit. Oh, really? Are you not allowed to here? Uh, no. Mm, back in the day, I did a lot of construction in our apartment that I probably wasn't supposed to do. Did you have to pay like? Deposit? No, the the policy there I think was just like you have to you have to fill any of the holes that you make in the wall, uh-huh. and I made a lot because I would I would put in like anchors and shelves and just like I, we just went nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like because Andrea just wants to customize every space she's in. Well, yeah, you have to. And so that's what we do. But yeah. Mm. But we're here in Baton Rouge today, uh, and Andrea is working the cameras today so that we can do a video version of the podcast, which is quite exciting. It is. Um, it's very different than our remote podcast that has always been exclusively, exclusively remote. Exclusively remote. I know. I was just saying, like, normally I'm just sitting in my closet. Like, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is more like my other podcast, Strangers Worth Meeting, where I do it in person with everybody. So, but you're probably not used to having to do the podcast format in this way. No. Do definitely. you like it? I think I, I think I do. I we'll think it's out. like nicer yeah. for sure. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. You don't have to worry about quite as much on yeah. this one because you don't, you don't have to do anything. You just show just, up. Here I am. Everything else is done. Um, what are we going to talk about today? We've, so I guess I'll fill people in on what we've been up to. So we have spent uh, the last, I guess today, just today and yesterday really, um, coming over to your place and doing a little work on marketing tea stuff um, because now that you are a real piece of the puzzle here at Marketing Tea, um, it's been nice to have Andrea and me and you all sit in a room yeah. and just like dive deep into what we want to do with marketing tea because we're just like, uh, you know, it's the funny thing about marketing agencies, I feel like, which is that they feel like they're somehow different from other businesses, but we're not. We also sit down and we also think about reaching our clients and right. how we can speak to our niche and how we can uh, build things in certain ways and how we can make our own systems better um, because, you know, that that's always been a challenge for us is trying to act like we we want to be like a boutique agency in that every client we have gets like a super unique message that is very much them and we've done that through content mm-hmm. but we also have to have good systems so that we can have like more than one client at a time like exactly. it's not possible for us to do everything all the time so um that's what we've been up to here and it's brought some good kind of marketing concepts to mind i think uh I think we could probably, I got some ideas. I got yeah. some ideas we should talk about today. Okay, let's do it. I mean, we we have been deep in thought just talking. Like I know yesterday we like ended off. We're like, man, where'd we go? Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those ends of the day where you just, <laughs> like, everybody just looks drunk just sitting there yeah, like, like, what are we talking about again? Um, I think that uh, a really good one to touch on and, and we haven't talked about, I don't think we've talked about like brands in a while. Um, and, and the umbrella effect of brands, I guess. But we really talked in depth about that yesterday with Marketing Tea. Oh, yeah, we also have Nola in the room with us. Yeah, she, she might make an appearance on camera. We'll see. Yeah, she's, be, she's much calmer when she's around you, for she, sure. Yeah, she's attached. Yeah. Um, so we have, yesterday, one of the things we were talking about was Marketing Tea. I'm happy to use marketing tea as an example because it's all out there and anybody can see our history of how we've right. how we've built this. So when we started marketing tea, uh, the niche that we really came into was working with birth centers and midwives. Uh, and that's been a, a fantastic, you know, part of the business for us. And really, it's still our bread and butter. We still specialize mm-hmm. in working with that type of business. But over the years, obviously, different types of businesses have reached out. And so now we've ex- we've expanded and we've worked with different types of businesses. We've worked with dentists now. We've also had a client that's been with us for a long time who is a chiropractor yeah. um, uh, and a functional medicine doctor. So we have a lot of different, uh, I guess, ability to work with lots of different types of businesses. And it's always been a challenge to say, do we continue to simply promote one niche or do we have the chance to expand and bring what we really do which is content 
for mm-hmm. lots of different types of businesses. And so this was the debate yesterday, the big it marketing was. debate. I don't even think we're settled yet. So it's funny that I'm bringing it up now. It's true. Like we're, it's definitely still in the middle of that conversation. Right. But I think that the part that's interesting for people who might be listening would be the rules that we set. So mm-hmm. when you sit down and have a similar conversation about what markets you want to work with or um, different services that you offer within your businesses that seem sort of off in different directions. Like the one for us was that Andrea and I also started Wild Hickson's and mm-hmm. we started working within the RV industry, which they also need lots of content. And right. We are also very good at making content. So the principles are all the same. Um but it's well outside of that sort of window Area, of, of yeah. healthcare. Yeah. So it's like, can we really make that make sense with everything else? So for, for businesses that are sitting down and trying to do that for themselves, I think the, part, the good part to understand are the rules of, of what things we say we should and shouldn't do. And the big one for me yesterday was trying to make this decision between umbrellas with the brand. Mm-hmm. And more often than not, I'm almost always telling people to make the broadest umbrella possible for their business because people think that if I want a new service or a new client segment or, or something else to incorporate into what I'm already doing, I need a new brand. I need a new logo and a new name and a different business yeah. to handle that part of it. And I'm, I'm almost always encouraging people not to do that. Yeah, I think I lean that way as well. I think it can get kind of confusing when you start to like branch off your brand because, I mean, you've already spent so much time building who you are and people know who you are. And then you have to do that all over again. It's almost like when you make um, a new social media account. I sometimes look back and think, why did I make her time a completely separate account when I should have really just built upon the Instagram account I already had? I wouldn't have started from ground zero. Like you're already there you've already established something and you can potentially grow easier and faster because right. you already have that base you don't need to start from ground zero all over again yeah it's i think the reason that it can get confusing for people and probably the reason that you did it in the first place too is because we are we are really blurring the lines between what is a business and what is a person mm-hmm. because yeah. it it turns out that when you go online everyone is a brand yeah there is no own. difference between your personal, unless unless you lock your Instagram down and it's private, that if, as long as you are like a public account, you're a brand. Yeah. You're a brand and there's nothing that says you have to be um, some certain type of business to make to make it work. There's plenty of people um, that are rocking hundreds of thousands of followers and getting influencer deals left and right mm-hmm. who are still rocking a classic personal profile. It's not, oh, yeah. you know, they've built the brand around themselves. Um, this is almost always why people in private practice, when they call me, I encourage them to use their name uh, mm-hmm. as the basis of what they're doing. Uh, it's one of the reasons that Andrea and I, when we were starting our own project, Wild Hickson's, said it's going to be our name and we want something catchy, but it's it's a qualifier that could work for a lot of things. So exactly. as Wild Hickson's, we can do anything, anything. we want to do mm-hmm. because we're still, that's about us. Um, it, it's just a real good rule of thumb to recognize that that those lines are getting blurred and start to be on the on the on the cutting edge of that and yeah. knowing that you're doing that in the first place i think when you use your name too it's also a lot easier for people to find you because i mean that's the first thing they're going to search they're not going to search your brand name probably as easily because they don't know it and they're not going to remember it but if they meet you they're going to remember your name and they're going to search your name so if you're not using your name as your brand name at the very least it needs to be in important places where people can find that information because that's what they're going to be using to right. find you. Right. We even, and it's funny because Peter yesterday mm. is the one who brought up um, Gary Vaynerchuk, who of yeah. course is, has the one who made content marketing popular. Um, and even he has sometimes too many different brands. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got so Vayner X, Vayner Media, Wine Library was the one I was forgetting about the other day. Mm-hmm. And then just, of course, his name itself carries a lot of weight. Yes. And so... There's, there's no perfect way to do this, but in general, the more you can set up larger umbrellas for yourself and, and the largest umbrella that you can do, it depends, it depends on the situation, obviously, but quite often a really large umbrella is to use your name mm-hmm. because you can be, we, maybe it's like that we understand that people can be multifaceted somehow yeah. and we don't get that a business can do that for some reason. We think that businesses are, are there one thing, right? They have to be specialized or they are yeah. specialized or, you know, um, it's almost like yeah, so, th- so the debate we were having yesterday with Marketing Tea, and feel free to weigh in on this, people, if you want to, yeah. is is one of the things that we're working with is how can we expand out and make it about the fact that Marketing Tea is here for content marketing. 
I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's content marketing. Yeah. Yeah. If a business can be helped by content marketing, then we can rock it. Um, But there's also a benefit to being able to speak to certain specializations and the fact that we have experience within those industries. So it's a it's a tricky thing. It is it is a tricky thing. And I I don't know, I always just relate this back to like what I know in terms of like personal brand stuff. You, they're always telling you to niche down almost, like to find your area. And then so I think that's always a great starting place and then you can grow from there. So at least starting in that niche. Like for me it was starting with fashion and then I kind of introduced holidays or um decorating and stuff like that, but to really build at the beginning, you need that one little area. Right. So I guess that's that's the other rule of the game. Yeah. Is recognizing that brands are going to grow and evolve as time goes on. Yeah, people do. That's what people do. Right. <laughs> and I mean, may- maybe you're offering services that you couldn't have when you first started. Yeah. I mean, that certainly happened with Marketing Tea. We, we didn't start doing content sessions, but that was the thing that was the game changer within our business mm-hmm. um, was when we decided that was something we could be very, very effective at. Um, and now we've built not just the business, but also Andrew and I have built our lives around doing content sessions. So um, you don't always know what that next move is going to be. Yeah. But again, you reference back to rule one, the <laughs> bigger that umbrella is, the more freedom you have to go and do that. So marketing T was not named in the beginning like midwifery marketing. Right. Because then I'd be having to come up with That's a new it. business name at some mm-hmm. point if we ever wanted to do content for anybody else. It would be too confusing. Yeah. Um, as it is, I just named it after tea because I like tea. Um, <laughs> I just like tea. Yeah, just enjoy enjoy a good cup of tea. Uh, and I didn't bring the kombucha again today. Can you believe that? Dang it. Should I bring it to Thanksgiving? Is that like a typical Thanksgiving thing, you know, some kombucha? <laughs> is it? Andrea's shaking her head. I, don't I mean, think we, so. who cares? We make up our own rules. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do what we need to do. Yeah. Um, I'll bring the I'll bring the sourdough rolls though. <laughs> um, what else did we kind of end up? I'm just I'm just going over all these things we talked about yesterday. I guess the other thing that we really ended up talking about was we were talking about if we wanted to work with other types of businesses. So again, if you want to have, I think this pertains really well to health and wellness because mm-hmm. health and wellness businesses are always adding more services. So oh, yeah. one example is birth centers who quite often also offer well woman care Mm -hmm. Um, so people can come in for their annual appointments or literally any type of care that they want with with cnms quite often Um, and it's the same for marketing team we say what other service or what other industry or what who else are we looking at here Um, the first thing that you need to plan for is to make content about that new thing right so regardless of what you're going to end up doing the way that you're going to tell people that this is a new thing, <laughs> exactly, is you have to show them something. Mm-hmm. And so one of the first things that we started planning, and we're already deep into this already. Deep I won't give away too much. <laughs> but in one day, we're already like set to start making content for the next piece the next of the puzzle step. for us. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you, if you want to be able to appeal to different, um, I guess, niches or specific targets, segments of people – you got to show them exactly what it is that you do. Exactly, yeah. You have to have something behind you that shows them you can do this and that they want to be invested in it with you. You got to have that backbone. Right. It'd be one thing if for her time, all of a sudden you changed your bio mm. and you said, now I do decorations also and it's like, and I do a lot of holiday type things. Yeah. But that's not what you did. You started with content. Right. You started with, I'm going to now make useful content to show people how I do these things. Mm-hmm. And that helps define the brand. It's not It's not the other way around. It exactly. doesn't come from the top down. No. It doesn't come from, here's what we say we're about, and it all flows down into the content. It's the opposite. It's that everything that you're doing, that content, that comprises how people are going to view you mm-hmm. as a brand. Um, otherwise, it's just a, a mandate that no one will notice. Right. It doesn't mean anything. They're right. like, oh, okay, are you good? Right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's sort of that like prove it effect. Right. It's sort of like people, people need to see the proof in the pudding. Mm-hmm. You can't just be like... This is a great pudding. They're like, well, I need to eat the pudding. Yeah, are you sure? It's good <laughs> Stop rolling your eyes at me over there. Um, I, got, I like when I have Andrea in the room to just uh, be a fly on the wall and just laugh at me. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you, dear. <laughs> it's good. You're married to me. You're stuck. He's just staring at me now. <laughs> Looking good over there. Looking good. What am I supposed to do? Um... I guess that's, I mean, those are the biggest things for me with branding. I think um, yeah. we 
I think we may do some more podcasting while we're here and maybe we can build on that a little bit, but I kind of want to keep it there for now so that people can really recognize the, the biggest thing. Your business is going to grow and evolve and change. Mm-hmm. How do you create a brand that is going to last an umbrella, all of that? Right. And then how do you actually show people it's happening, which comes from the bottom up, it comes from the content. And that's one thing that Marketing Tea can help you do, of course. Absolutely. Put together some beautiful content for that social media. Um, Anything else I'm missing? I think that's about it, yeah. Spot on for the day. (laughs) Um, Nailed it. Thanks to my co-host, Kenzie. Uh, Thanks to Baton Rouge for having us. Um, Thanks to Andrea for running the cameras. (laughs) And as always, everybody, we're going to see you on the next episode.